Hello friends, welcome back and uh, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the default arguments in the functions. So before we discuss about the default arguments, uh, let us consider one scenario. Uh, you might have filled some form like uh, uh, right like examination forms. Okay, so when you fill the examination forms, there are certain questions. Okay, uh, those questions are like uh, have you ever uh, caught into some wrong activities is there any case against you in nearby police station something like that so by default they are selected as no if you don't put anything then it is considered that it is no okay but if you tick like specifically you check that box then it means that yes you have selected a value and you are saying that yes but if you don't select it says that uh, it's no right like you have never been uh, involved in any of the wrong uh, activities during your lifetime okay so this happens when you are filling some uh, form for the uh, some examination or some form for uh, some job applications something like that happens okay so uh, suppose for uh, in your uh, school you are uh, for any school admission you are doing that thing right so when you are doing that thing for the school admission then you might have provide you you must need to provide the name address all those things but there are few things even which you don't tick if you don't provide they consider that you will not opt for this option right suppose uh, there is an option in your uh, school form that if if you select any of the activities if you ch check any of the activities then that particular activities will be assigned against you and the fees will be deducted for that particular activity uh, you know uh, from your parents okay you need to uh, pay that your parents need to pay that fees okay so if you don't provide anything then it means that you have not opted so there are two things either you opt or you don't opt if you don't take any action if you don't decide anything then in that case it is no so when you don't decide anything then what will be the value for you that is the real life significance of these default arguments in a function I hope you are able to connect it okay suppose let me write the same kind of function suppose we are uh, checking like some name right like, uh, like uh, void form or you can say like student form okay so if you write like uh, care strict name okay, you are taking the name here in fact it should be const care strict okay so it's const care strict name and then it comes like uh, boolean uh, opt you can say like uh, any game you can like uh, cricket opt cricket okay so if you uh, don't want to take the cricket in that case what will happen if you take a decision either yes or no then it's okay otherwise if if your form or if your application contains any such thing where user may skip that particular value and in that case you have to assume some default value for that case these kind of default arguments come come into the picture and for those cases only this default argument thing has been added in your C++ language so suppose if no one opts for anything then I will opt as I will consider the value as false so this is the significance of default argument that is why we provide the default arguments okay so name can be provided but if you want to opt for the cricket you may leave it okay so this is the default argument what is the use of default how you use how you call such functions uh, which have the default argument suppose you have to call this function so there are two ways to call this function okay student form you can give the name like Vikash it's my name and you can give like true I want to opt for cricket okay you can if you compile it let us compile it okay so if you compile it then in that case you will be able to see that it has been compiled successfully if you give it false although it's false but you can provide it false you can also give the false here so optional argument means you want to react then you can react if you don't want to uh, check anything there if you don't want to react this option react against this option then in that case you can leave it if you uh, don't take any action then it, 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 it is informed to you that if you don't take any option then it will be like you are not taking any option and there may be some schools 
uh, which can you know consider like even if you don't opt for any of the games it will by default assign you the game of tennis or the uh, game of uh, you know uh, what you say the badminton okay so you can have another option right like you can change the name like bull uh, you can write like uh, uh, here you can write like care asterisk uh, game opt okay so if you don't provide anything then it can be like badminton okay so there may be some schools like if you don't opt for anything then it will be badminton always you have to play the badminton okay so these are the practical significance of the you know default arguments uh, so if you don't take any action if you don't react to any of the options in your form or any of the options that have been provided to you in that case the system must need to assume some default values for that so that is the significance of these default arguments and let me tell you these default arguments if you try to compile the same code in c language you will be able to see the errors because the default arguments are not available in c language okay so now let's see uh, this this is the another way uh, but there is one more thing if there is an argument which is default argument then i told you that if you don't want to react you can leave it so i don't want to provide the second argument value then in that case i can just provide the first argument and i can leave the second argument which is an optional argument okay so now this will again be compiled okay so this is the thing so you can have as many number of default arguments if you want first thing you need to remember as many default arguments you want you can add okay i want to add uh, one more suppose default argument it can be for something else so bool some dummy value b dummy okay is equal to false okay this i have done so if i want to do like this then also i can uh, take this and uh, again this uh, this thing will be compiled okay if i want to provide if i want to provide the value for opt cricket i can provide true and i can leave the last argument the dummy one then also it will be compiled okay can i do something like that like the middle one i don't want to provide but the last one i want to provide as true can i do that let us see that you can see that it cannot be done so it cannot be done like if you want to leave some argument you just uh, place a comma and then you move ahead no this is not possible so the second thing that you need to understand is that you need to remember is that you cannot omit the default arguments in between in a sequence of default arguments okay so you cannot omit that um, omit them so I, either you need to provide something here like like this false and then you can do like true so this is for c++ language there are many other languages where again the default arguments are there concept of default argument is there but uh, you can do something like that whatever i did earlier right but if this is c++ language so please remember you cannot do this okay and the third thing the which is the most important thing again to remember is that default arguments can only be the trailing arguments what does this mean it means that all the arguments which are at the end of the function arguments all the you know in a sequence if they are all the last arguments then in that case it is good but if you do something like this then in that case what will happen see uh, if i do b opt cricket okay uh, is equal to false this is not the correct scenario here i just want to provide one more thing uh, i want to provide uh, int k some value and see there is one 
default argument after that there is mandatory argument and then after that i have added one you know uh, one default argument so default mandatory default is it a possible scenario so let's see no this is not a possible scenario because this is saying that if you are considering all the argument this argument as uh, you know as default argument then after that any any argument that you are going to add that will be the default argument only so which means in other words you can say that default arguments can only be the trailing arguments okay so which means another fourth point is that there cannot be a mandatory argument between the two default arguments okay you got the point i hope so there cannot be mandatory argument between the two default arguments so all the trailing arguments should be default argument if any of them uh, starts from here like being a default argument then till the end all the uh, argument should be trailing arguments oh, sorry uh, default arguments now is it possible that all the arguments are default starting from the first argument all the arguments can be default or not the answer is yes all the arguments can be default okay let me show you so let me first remove this and let me write one function here it's like int sum it will give you the sum of two numbers int a int b is equal to 0 if you don't provide any value then it will be like 0 it will consider it at 0 and it will return a plus b which is the sum of two numbers which will be 0 plus 0 is equal to 0 in case you don't provide any argument so if you do like this sum uh, if you leave it like this and if you want to int k is equal to sum you want to do like this and if you want to print it you know that to print uh, you can use the uh, you know uh, c out and then you can on the next line i want to print k okay so i want to get the sum store it in k and then i want to print it okay so what will happen it should return zero because if you have not provided any value then it will consider both the values as zero and it will add a zero with zero which will be a zero so let me first compile it and let us see if it compiles yes so it will very well compile and after that let me uh, build it so after building it let me run it so if i run it you can see that the output given here is zero okay now if i provide like uh, two here then the sum will be two you can see two has come here okay if i provide two plus three two and three then it will give me the result as five so all the arguments see here five so all the arguments can be the default arguments now let us consider uh, one more scenario we have understood about the function overloading in the uh, past uh, lecture okay now in the function overloading you know that uh, you can write the two functions with the same name so let me write one more function with the same name there is a function sum whose all the arguments are by default they are all the default arguments and here i'm just going to write one function where the arguments are not you know default they are not the default arguments they are the mandatory doc, uh, arguments okay so if i do like this return a plus b then what will happen if i call int k is equal to sum and i put like two and uh, three then what will happen will it call any of the functions and which function it will call let us see that so if i compile it it will give me the error right 
so it is saying me that int intent already has a body because of this if I do like this only one argument I call then compiler is able to decide that which version is to call again so if you do this then there are chances that it will not be able to decide which version need to be called when there will be two arguments you are getting the point you have written this function and this function this function is taking two arguments this function is taking two argument this has both the arguments as default arguments this doesn't have all the arguments as default arguments so there can be confusion when you will pass any of the two if, if you pass two arguments so that is why it is uh, not uh, compiling for your code okay so this is the problem okay so if you write like this int a and return a something like suppose I have written some other function and even if I don't call anything int b if I write like this only okay return a plus b then what will happen let us see if I don't call this I just write the function then what will happen again function some intent already has a body so if you have written two functions and one function has all the default arguments and the other function has mandatory arguments right or if you say like one is mandatory and one is like default then again in that case there are chances compiler knows the compiler is smart enough it knows that it may be that at some point of time someone may call the sum function with the two arguments if someone will call the sum function with the two arguments then how it will be decided that which version of sum need to be called this need to be called or this need to be called and that is why it is giving you the error it is not allowing you to write another function okay so if you if you do something like this uh, int if you put only int a then in that case let us see what happens this b is wrong so in this case let us see what happens so let me compile it so this time it will compile you know why because here here it will be able to distinguish compiler knows that I will be able to distinguish between the two sum calls because if you have to call this sum with one argument then it will be able to call it but again if you write like this sum then it knows that I need to call this function if you write like this two then it knows that I need to call this function so again in this case let us see if it fails or not it will again fail ambiguous call you can see ambiguous call because in this case uh, it can also call this version of sum and this version of sum so it is again not able to distinguish so if it is not able to distinguish if it can proactively decide you can see that it is able to your compiler is proactively deciding as well as when you are writing some code to call a version of the function then also it is deciding if you don't call anything then you might have seen that this was perfectly compiling okay it will be compiled it will give you the succeeded message but if you call any of the sum function with a single argument then it will not be able to find it and that is why it, it will give you the ambiguous call error if I don't put any error uh, sorry any of the arguments in the second sum function and if I call the sum function here right away then also do you think there will be an ambiguous call yes there will be an ambiguous call why because if you compile it this sum the compiler doesn't know which version of sum need to be called because sum takes both the arguments as default arguments and this sum is not taking any of the arguments so which version need to be called the one with no arguments or the one with the default arguments it will not be able to decide compiler is not able to decide in this case so that is why it is giving you the ambiguous call error but if you don't call it at all if you remove this and now if you compile it it will not have any issues okay just return zero it will not have any issues so it will give you the perfect result right so proactive and while calling the function when you call the function in your code reactive mode 
So when you call the function, you are reacting, right? Like you want to call some of the version of these functions. So that is the react, that is reacting function, reacting against a function, right? So proactively and reactively, both ways compiler decides whether there is an ambiguity or not. If there is any ambiguity or if there will be any problem like how to decide which version to call in that case, it will simply give you the result. It will simply give you the compiler issue that I cannot compile it. This is a syntactically wrong thing. Now, lot, now let me know if I do like this int a, int b and int c. So if I write this function, then will it compile? Yes, it will, it will compile perfectly fine. Okay, if I do a call like sum, now will my code compile? That is interesting to see. I hope you know the answer. It will compile, right? Because sum knows that which version need to call. It need to call this function. It knows. If I do like sum one, two, then it knows that I need to call this. If I, uh, so compile this and let's see this. It knows that I need to call this. So it will be fine. If I do like one, then it knows that I that I need to call the you know uh, the first version. So you can see like it has been compiled and run. So if you compile it, it will be able to show you the result that this has been succeeded. The compilation is succeeded. So this is how this decides like uh, for any of the ambiguities. So this is you must. This is something we, which you must need to understand and which you must need to practice yourself you must need to practice all these things okay all the arguments can be default sixth thing is sixth word thing is like check the ambiguous call call possibilities okay so ambiguous call possibilities are there so you need to uh, check them when you are writing any function with the default arguments or you can uh, and you and you are using also the uh, function uh, overloading so here the concept of function overloading was used along with the function default argument concepts so i hope you might have understood so these are the basic concepts if they are asked to you in the interview questions or if you are working in any of the real time projects then you get confused sometimes okay so if you are clear about at least these six points about the default arguments then in that case you are good to go now if i call let's do the last thing as well if i call like one two one three four so that will also compile because it knows that which version i need to call it need to call this function this sum need to call okay so this is how it works so i hope you might have understood about the uh, uh, default arguments and uh, function overloading plus default argument concept where the ambiguity can, can come. So if you know all these things now, if you have understood all these things now, go and do the practice yourself and then you will be able to, you know, uh, cement it in your mind, like how these things work. So with this, I would like to say, uh, have a nice day to you and would like to say bye to you. Have a nice day. Bye bye and good night. Thank you.